What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and I was actually working on a different project. I started working on something completely different and then I came across this awesome block in the mod pack and I thought, well, I have to just make a video on this because people need to know this exists and it's, um, it, it's, hold on, hold on, we can, there we, oh, no, that's the same, hold on. There we go. It's this awesome keypad. And I thought this was super, super cool. So the mod pack guys have actually gone ahead and made a two by two keypad that actually has a bunch of numbers on it. So we'll just set up a really simple number display up here. Uh, and we'll just do, you know, a couple decimal points and hook everything in no problem. And then of course we got to just paint all the appropriate colors. Those are our two decimals. It's our tens our hundreds and our thousands and now if we put in numbers you can see it types in so one two three four point five six and look at that it'll create them all we can also backspace and it'll go backwards through all the commands that we gave it or we can also just type in a bunch of numbers and then click the escape button now i think this is really really cool i think it's super super neat it's really neat to have sort of an integrated system like this especially when you're doing like password protected things i thought you know we've always done these like locked doors and stuff but it's always been a combination of switches so i thought today why don't we try and make a locked door that uses this keypad so you have to enter in a few numbers hit enter and that lets you go through the door now when you press enter on this it actually sends a tick through the system and the reason they did that is so if you hook it into memory we can type out a number and then when we press enter, you can see it flicks the memory bit. So it'll actually store that in memory. So I feel like using that and some math blocks, we should be able to make a door where you have to type in a password. If you get it right, it opens the door. Uh, if you get it wrong, it just, I don't know, flashes a red light and then resets whatever you guess. But just with this keypad, I can think of a hundred different things that I want to build because this is just such an easy way to input numbers now into the uh, sort of logic system. So I'm gonna build a really simple password protected sliding door and I think it should be relatively easy to do to be honest. I think this keypad does a lot of the work for us. So we can just delete all that and uh, let's get started on this project. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is uh, some kind of wall, I guess, just separating the two areas and we'll just use one of the stock maintenance doors. So I believe if we just search in door here, it should come up and this is what we'll use for a door mechanism. So. We need a space that's like five by seven, I believe, just like that, perfect. And we'll just basically put this over here with a piston pushing it across to open and close it. So it shouldn't be too big a deal, relatively simple door setup and uh, just something like this. And now of course we put a switch on this, we could just connect it up and I believe if we move this five blocks, there we go, the door perfectly covers that up and we'll put a little seam there. And now we'll make this wall too thick and actually we'll end up making it three thick, but this will allow us to sort of build the circuitry in between the two wall panels. We'll try and make the circuitry as compact as we can right over here. And then that way we'll be able to seal it in with a third wall. And then we'll kind of have the whole thing completely hidden. So here we go. If we press that, the door closes and uh, actually we need to put some blocks just on either side of it like that. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so I've just painted the wall a nice light gray color, and I think the first thing we're going to do is put down our keypad. Uh, that seems pretty good, and we're going to put a light above it. This will just be kind of like a red indicator light, so if you get the password wrong, we can have that light turn on and let you know that you've gotten it wrong. We'll just put a memory block here, and we'll feed that keypad in, and we'll open the door up for now. So we'll just create a single number display here that we can use for testing stuff. And I think we'll just make the password five digits long. We could do, you know, I think six, seven, or eight. I'm not exactly sure what the mod pack number limit is. I know there is some crazy high limit. I'm sure it's in like the millions or something, but we could eventually kind of max it out. So we can hook this memory bit into there just so we can see what number it is. And now if we come back here to the keypad and we type in a number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, and press enter, it should show us one, two, three, four, five. So that number is now actually stored in this memory bit and it's displaying one, two, three, four, five here for us. And of course, in order to set the password, we'll just have a second memory bit with a keypad that will kind of hide inside the wall. So we'll hook this one up to the second one here and we'll give it the password to start of one, two, three, four, five. This way we could actually change the password if we wanted to just by uncovering the wall, typing in the new password here and it'll store it in that second memory bit. Now all we need to do is a bunch of math. Um, 
And I'm not exactly sure how a tick behaves. But anyways, the first comparison obviously is are the two equals. So we can just, you know, put the equals condition. And if we hook this and this up into it, right now they should both be equal, which is totally true. If we type in a different number here, so we can delete all this and press enter, it should set it to zero. And now they're not equal. So this top one is now zero. And the bottom one, which is our password, is still one two three four five now i think in order to do this all we really need to do is have a sort of a timer system that automatically resets this and because enter sends a tick i think we can actually use that for the timer so let's just test something here if we hook the keypad directly into a logic gate and we fill the keypad with a number one two three four five it doesn't actually light up the logic gate but if we press enter it does. It does send a single tick through it. So this is actually really, really easy to do. We can actually use that one tick to our advantage. We can just hook this keypad into that logic gate. So now whenever we press enter on this keypad, it'll send one tick through this logic gate, which needs to then evaluate if the code is right or not. So actually, let's do two AND gates here. We'll have equals on the top and we'll have not equals on the bottom because of course, if it's not equals or if it's equals, we want it to do two different things. So right now they're not equals. Feed them into both AND gates and feed that in from this keypad. So whenever we press enter, that one tick will let one tick pass through here, depending on if the password and what we've entered into the keypad are equal or not. Although to be honest, I think it takes a tick to set the stuff to memory. So we're gonna probably have to put a delay on this system. So we'll actually take the keypad, feed it into this timer first, and then feed that into there, just so we can give it a little bit of a delay in the response time. Now. I don't really know how to test this because of course the keypad's on the wrong side. You know what, for now let's bring this keypad over to this side and then we'll put it over there after. So we'll just put it up top here for now and it was connected to this top memory bit as well as into that timer. So if we go one, two, three, four, five and we press enter. Okay, so you can see it did set the password, then it evaluated the equals and the timer gave it enough time to pulse that tick through. So perfect, so that's actually exactly what we want. And now if we clear it and press enter, it's not equals and it pulses through there. So when it's equals, we need it to then open the door for a set amount of time. And when it's not equals, we need it to just reset the password here and then flash the red light. So in order to do that, um, we just need a couple memory bits. One memory bits for the red light and one memory bit is for the door. Actually, we should probably have a green light too, right? And just have, you know, red and green so you know if the door opens or not. All right, perfect. So we've got two lights here. So we're just going to set up, uh, you know, a couple of XOR memory bits here, really, which is just a lot of XOR gates. And this is actually going to be relatively easy because the whole thing's on a one tick system. Um, so it shouldn't have any problems and it shouldn't glitch out. So we can just do that. And then if we feed this into all three and this one into all three as well, uh, we should have it now. So if we type in the same password, one, two, three, four, five, enter, it's equal. And it turns on the fact that it's all equal. Uh, and then if we clear that, of course, and then type enter, it's not equal and it sets the fact they're not equal. Of course, we don't have a reset just yet. And to reset them, all we're gonna do is use that same tick from this timer and just keep passing it along to another timer. So this will be a five second timer and it'll just determine how long the door is open or closed for and how long the lights are on. So we can actually connect our lights right now. So we've got the green light. We can connect from this top bit, the red light from that bottom bit. And uh, this timer would just actually just resets everything. So we just hook this into here. And I'm pretty sure that's the whole mechanism. We don't really need this anymore. This is storing our password, but who really cares? And we can cap this wall off just like that. So I think this is actually gonna work now. Um, our password is currently one, two, three, four, five. So let's go into the keypad. If we type in one, two, three, four, five, enter, light goes green, lets us know we got the password right. That's awesome. What happens if we hit enter again? Um, what? All right, I don't think it's resetting this memory bit, but I'm pretty sure we can just put a tick button here. We'll paint this white and feed that into the memory bit. And I'm pretty sure that's a reset for it. It is. Okay, so if we type in one, two, three, four, five, enter, we got the password right and it stores it there, but it hasn't reset the bit. But if we take this tick here and feed it through the white button back into that, I'm pretty sure once it's done this timer, it'll send another tick to reset that memory bit back to zero. So if we press... Um, delete all this and go one, two, three, four, five, enter. It's green. I don't know why that red light's still on. We'll figure that out in a sec. Okay, now they're both off. All right, perfect. And now if I just press enter, 
Oh, it, I'm still, oh, no, it still didn't, it didn't reset it. Is black the reset or is white the reset? Oh, white sets it. Oh, okay, black is the reset. Gotcha, gotcha. I think it was just painted wrong. So if we go delete all this, one, two, three, four, five, enter. It's green. Yeah, ignore the red light. We'll deal with that in a sec. All right, it's all off. And yeah, that got reset now. They're no longer equal. So if we just press enter now, why is that? Oh, I think the keypad stores the value. Okay, so I actually just messaged Durf to confirm that this is uh, the way it is. It's only an output type part in that it only outputs connections. Can't feed anything into it, but that's actually not that big a deal. It basically just means if you type in a password or whatever, and then you press enter, you gotta make sure that you remember to clear your password before you walk through the door. So we're just gonna give ourselves, uh, I think five seconds is still enough. I also had to add a few more AND gates to the back here. I realized the reason the red light was turning on is because this one timer was feeding all the bits. So if the red light was off, it would just turn it on. And then of course, we just gotta wire this thing into the piston. So to do that, we just gotta hook a NOR gate in to have the piston always closed. And we need to have that coming from this side here, which is the green side. So you can see our piston is always closed. Um, I can't put it there. I need I need that for this block. Hold on. Okay, we'll put it on this side. Come around the front and we type in our password. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. It goes green. It opens the door. And then after five seconds, it should turn it off and close the door. Now our password is still saved, so we can just press enter again. It'll open the door and let us go back through. Perfect, no problem. And we can just keep doing that. That's fantastic. But of course, if we clear the password and press escape, uh, we have to wait for the five seconds. And then we press enter. It'll go red and it keeps the door closed. So that's really a basic password system. We can, of course, delete all this. You don't need to see that. And now we've got ourselves a really simple keypad. Now, of course, we don't have a number display. We could build a big number display into the wall, but it would be one block per number. I don't think there's a smaller display yet, but either way, this is still a really cool system. So one, two, three, four, five, enter, boom, we open the door and we come right through, no problem. Now, the one thing we do need is we need a way to get back through from this side because if we're on this side, we're, let's say, in our locked room and we want to make sure we can get out no problem. So let's just frame up this door a little bit more. And we'll just connect that down like so. This wall is going to end up being basically three thick. So we can cover up the piston on that side. And now we can delete this over here. Uh, we can delete this over here. And then we just need a simple button, really. And this button, we're going to then connect through a tick button here. And the tick button just means no matter how long we hold this button for, it only generates a single tick that we can use in our circuit. And this is kind of a little weird, but we're just going to feed this directly into the OR gate here, which then in turn turns on this bit, this top green bit to let us know that we've opened the door. And then we're also going to feed it through a timer, which then goes back through that same bit. So I believe we have five seconds. We'll feed it through another five second timer. Same deal. And then also go back into that bit. So this should click open the door by activating that green bit and then after the five second timer it closed that door again perfect so now we can actually seal up this whole thing and completely paint it and there we go we've now got a perfectly password protected sliding door press enter denied access and uh, we got to wait till that light comes off to give another attempt then we go one two three four five enter passwords open perfect no problem and it lets us go through. Now, if we want to reset the password, all we got to do is open the door up here, clear off this number pad, give it a new password. Let's say 98765. And we'll type enter. It sets the password into there. And then, of course, we can seal this back up and recover this up with some paint. Now, we can still get out this way. No problem. That doesn't change. But if we come to the front here, we clear and we type 12345 again. Now you can see that password is actually wrong. And again, I don't know what the limit is for the number of digits. We could probably go up to like six or seven or eight digits even. But at least for, you know, four or five digit passwords, it's not going to be a problem. And you could, of course, add decimals in as well. You could do 9876.32, whatever. Um, 98765, right? Enter. Look at that. Perfect. So I think this is a really, really cool part. I'm super excited about it. It's more like a lock-unlock 
rather than actually like a keypad that you type in once and walk through but still a really really cool thing and of course I can think of a ton of other things we can use this keypad for in other cool creations now I will upload this door to the workshop if you guys want to take a look you can download it check out how this circuit works it's not too complicated it is a relatively simple circuit but I think it's really cool that you can use this keypad in just such a neat way to make a much cleaner looking door setup that's password protected but of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and while you're at it hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.